they have certain phrases that they say, like how cool or awesome in Nicaragua you say tuanis, que tuani, or or que salvaje, which is like like wild, you know. They also say a lot like vapue, vapues at the end, like okay, we'll see you later, kind of a thing. Sometimes they'll drop their s's. Escritura, you know, they'll they'll they have more of an H sound than the S. Another unique thing about Nika Spanish is that they'll speak in voz a lot, which is kind of like a third really informal level of Spanish, kind of like country Spanish. Tu is usually the informal form, but tu felt to me almost like the formal, and voz was informal, and you almost never heard usted. It's just a really fun. Uh, colloquial language and very colorful their expressions really vibrant people the way they talk I, I picked up their accent my parents were like you sound your Spanish sounds different and so it, it's just something that um, you fall in love with the way they talk and the way they are so. so the main dish in Nicaragua was gallo pinto and it's just rice and beans mixed together a little red bean and rice that uh, is cooked together in it I don't know what kind of seasonings. Sometimes they have a little salad of onions and tomatoes, which they call salad. And if they do give you greens, sometimes they put lemon on it, which I thought was great, and I still do that. And But gallo pinto, the rice and beans, is something that you ate every day, that Nicaraguans eat every day, especially the majority, you know, that can't afford a lot fancier meals. But I, I, I thought it was delicious. It was so tasty, the way they prepared it. And it was a different kind of rice and bean that I was used to. And it just tasted so good. I never got tired of it. And it was usually served with some banana on the side um, or plantain that was fried in oil. And it was delicious. And sometimes a little piece of cheese on the side, which I didn't like. And Nicaraguans love it. I'm just not a fan of it. But I loved the rice and beans, the gallo pinto, the banana. There would be either, you know, the plantain or they would make it comes in all shapes and sizes sometimes they would make little chips out of it you can buy in little packets and just eat it like a potato chip but there were banana chips or tostones which i think in other countries are called pacatones and you just get the little pieces of banana and then you know smash them and fry them in oil i would often hear that nicaragua is the safest place in central america the safest country in central america it's also the biggest and with the, the smallest population at least when i was there uh, it still had about five, six million people, but it was a bigger country, and so I don't know if that impacted it. Not as dense. Manao, I'm sure, got pretty dense, and there was crime in the city, but it was still felt relatively safe. You had to be careful. My fifth area was actually really different. Most of my areas were really, really safe. Uh, my fifth area was different, my, my one unique area, and it was Reparto Chic. It was considered like the most dangerous area but it had like that fama or just the reputation you'd see little like gangs there it was just kind of a messier area there'd be trash everywhere some poor areas right next to some rich areas you had to be careful we were really friendly with the gang members or whatnot so i think that helped just being friendly with them there were just a few moments and a few instances where it got a little tricky someone was drunk you'd shake their hand they wouldn't want to let go Eventually they let go. This one guy that was drunk again went up to me and my trainer and said that he fought gatos or cats like my trainer back in the war. But you know, I think it was just drunken talk and um, we eventually kind of separated. So I'm sure there's areas that you, you have to be really careful. But as far as, um, I know there are a lot, I feel like there are a lot more gangs in El Salvador and Guatemala than in Nicaragua. The most dangerous, there were student protests, we had to stay home sometimes, there were students burning the buses, but demonstrations one time for for some kind of demonstration they were doing, but that was like the only time we actually had to stay indoors. Most of the time I felt pretty safe, and I was in one of the most dangerous parts of the city. I know there's a different government president now, I don't know if things have changed dramatically but so I got there during the Semana Santa kind of the Easter break and that's during the end of the really hot part of the year and they go to the beach as a family a lot of people I know they're really into baseball to in Nicaragua it's one of like the few Latin American countries where baseball is really big soccer is too but baseball is, is big I mean they're just a really friendly people they have a great sense of humor they call their youngest son El Comiche El Comiche, that's what they call the youngest kid. They also have different words like chele is for someone that um, 
looks white or is blonde or something like that. You know how in Mexico you'll say huero, uh, in Costa Rica they'll say something else, but in Nicaragua they say chile. People that have colored eyes, I thought it was fun that they call them gato, like cat in Spanish because I guess you know, cats have colored eyes, so they see someone with colored eyes is kind of the exception rather than the rule, so they call them gato. They love to get to know people and, and help you out, and so I think that, um, you know, people are also really out and about, kind of like in the older days of our country, I feel like, where people are in smaller towns, where people know each other, and a lot of people get drunk. There, I was in one area, my second area was in Chichigalpa, which was right next to El Ingenio San Antonio, where they make it the flor de caña um, beer. Mango was also huge in Nicaragua. It's the land of mangoes. Just everywhere there's mango trees on every corner and they also can slice them up and you just eat them. They have these little um, bags of drinks, um, fruit drinks. Um, I think we were only able to get the ones that had been boiled or had purified water because we weren't allowed to use any of the tap water in Nicaragua. We always had a water company give us, you know, the big gallons of purified water. But there were a lot of the the little fruit juice packets that we could buy. And, you you know, they're just in a little plastic baggie. And they're really cheap and really good. You just tear a little piece of the corner and just, you know, drink it up. So there were a passion fruit. Uh, maracuya was a big drink. They also make drinks out of cereals, like grains, like oatmeal, avena, was not something... You eat for breakfast, it was something you drank. Um, it was really good. Pinolillo is a huge drink, which is, I think, a mixture of corn and chocolate, uh, cacao, and maize, but it, it kind of looks like dirt in, in a cup. So it doesn't, it can taste uh, kind of really grainy, and you have to sweeten it up, I think, for it to taste pretty good, but it, it's really popular, and that's why Nicaraguans are called pinoleros. From what I understand, it's because they drink a lot of pinolillo. There's a lot of corn-based drinks, chicha, which is corn. Um, so fruits, rice and beans, um, huge avocados, tropical fruit, mamon, which is this little green round fruit. You peel it and it's orange and it has a big seed, but it's really tart. It's really good. Some people will give you meat or seafood. On the East Coast, I think they put coconut in the Gallo Pinto. We probably have a lot more seafood, but a lot of people just can't afford to give you meat every meal. So mostly it's rice and beans and avocado, bananas, mango, fruits, drinks, which I thought was really good high energy food and keeps you going. I thought it was really delicious, good food. They also have naca tamales, which are like tamales, Mexican ones, but they're wrapped in in a, a banana leaf and they're steamed they're kind of cooked different the masa is a little more wet I feel like and it has a lot of things mixed into it so it's not it looks pretty different than a Mexican one but that's a big thing in Nicaragua the naca tamales as well they have soups where they put yuca like um, I don't know that's like cassava or potato kind of stuff and vegetables and so the, sometimes they'll give you these really delicious soups that are just really good, full of all these things. And I notice sometimes like the carrots and things are just really big down there. You have to be careful. We couldn't eat the fritanga. I think that's what it was called, the, the food on the streets, unless you, you know, really knew the person or knew it was clean. In Nicaragua, you know, it's right in the tropics between like 11 and 14 degrees north of the equator. And so, and it has two seasons. It's kind of like Africa where it's dry and wet. And so um, they call it winter and summer, but that's not really cold and hot. It's just wet and dry. Winter is wet from the middle of May to like November and December to the, to the beginning of May is summer or the dry season. And so the weather affects the nature a lot. When I first got there, you know, it was the end of the dry season. And so it was kind of like just a dry savanna. Um, there were bugs and things that were still humid, but not nearly like what you would experience just a few months later once June hit and the, you know, the rains came. And I just remember May is fascinating for me because um, I saw the land transform. I was out in this middle, you know, the mountain range in the middle of Nicaragua, and it was all parched. It had its, you know, it was still 
beautiful, but it was, I didn't know what it was going to turn into. It became a lush Jurassic Park kind of in a few months. But in May, everything just, the awas de mayo, the waters of May, the rains just come and transform. It's like the the dirt would almost flip on itself and uh, green would just start to pop out. And it was um, so lush. Within a month, by June, it was totally green. From April to June, you just saw an amazing transformation. And then you get a little bit more bugs. And, you, and I remember there were like these frogs. It sounded like they were having Star Wars like like battles. And it was all these noises and at night and kind of like what you would hear maybe in Florida or in the deep south here in the US, you know. Or I really never had too much of a problem with mosquitoes. I'm sure others did. The fan would take care of mosquitoes because it was right on your face because it was so hot at night that's how you could sleep. Um, I remember my first area we had we took bucket showers you know especially since this was the end of the dry season and there would be little geckos little lizards in the cement little outhouse shower that we had. I remember like that it's like looking at me you know but I mean just seeing all these little lizards and things like that everywhere it I was I was born in a desert city, so I wasn't used to all these bugs. But you know, you get used to. The, I think the living conditions have improved. I mean, I'm not sure, but um, some of the apartments we had, you know, you had to deal with cockroaches, sometimes rats. But there was a couple that did have quite a bit of that. I heard a joke that one time someone said Nicaragua. Six meses de lodo, six meses del polvo. Six months mud, six months dust, and it's not quite that bad. But you know, in the dry season, especially towards the end, there's just so much dust, like from February to April, um, and then in the rainiest parts of the year, you're just tracking through so much mud. I went through so many pairs of shoes. I remember sometimes walking through this, the roads; they'd become rivers, and to me, it was exciting. It was like an adventure, you know. It, you know, I, but it was something you had to deal with. Deal, you had to have an umbrella with you often. Uh, you'd get completely soaked. They call them aguaceros, which is just kind of huge downpours, cloud cloudburst, where uh, you get wet instantly uh, with how hard it rains there. But it, it wasn't like uh, I don't know, like Seattle or something, where it's constantly raining. It was mostly sunny Nicaragua with those every day afternoon downpours. If there were hurricanes nearby, then it would be, you know, I was there in 05 when Katrina and Wilma and all those hurricanes in the Caribbean. So it was a really rainy, wet season in 05, but luckily we didn't have a, too bad of a devastating hurricane. But that's always a possibility. But you will have um, dry weather and really wet weather, but not much cold. Unless you're up in Matagalpa in the early mornings, some of the highlands can get kind of cold. My coldest area was in Hinotepe, and it was just comfortable. It was a comfortable cool. It wasn't really cold, which, which I was fine going without a winter for two years.